So what do you get when you take RoboCop, Short Circuit, and Wally? -E? You get Chappy. So we're here tonight at Brennan Theaters watching Chappie. To see last week's review, go on ahead and click the logo down here at any time. I'm gonna be completely honest with you, I have zero expectations going in this movie. I saw the preview, I'm kinda like, that's a total cluster of all these other robotic movies thrown together, They're trying to make a new story. It has Hugh Jackman in it and I really like him and I do like robot things because we're not that far off from actually having legitimate things of that nature. For me, this movie had action and it had depth and it had a great concept, but it had plot holes and very bad decision making with acting. When they're trying to explain the complex science of it, they'll be like, oh, this, this, gr -gr -gr -gr, AX plus B. And then all of a sudden they hit enter and it's like solved. And you're kind of like, I feel cheated right now that there's a lot more to it than your little exposition there. You don't even give me three lines of dialogue to kind of make me ponder on it and chew on that for a while. The guy that did District 9 made this movie, and District 9 was pretty cool. I liked that movie. The, the whole idea that aliens kind of got stuck here and, you know, were kind of mean to them, and then they, they just want to go home. And this is all about, you know, I have an idea. Let's put it this way. For big corporate boss people, when your people come to you with ideas, why don't you just listen to them? Let's start there, Sigourney Weaver. So the movie has its fun moments. It has its action. Definitely when the action goes, it goes. But at the same time, why is it that the robots, the ones with good aim and the gangsters can't seem to hit anything, turning it sideways? I mean, bam, bam, I don't know. It was kind of almost eye rolling. You know, you're kind of like, okay, yeah, you're gangsters. I get it. I watch it and I'm like, I'm, I'm getting bored. Let's get back to Chappie. Let's get back to that. I did like the idea that he learned super quick. Like they did do one little exposition where, oh, it takes this amount of time from a baby to this point and he did it in X amount of time. So you, you know, do the math and you figure, oh my God, he's going to be super cool. What I did not like though is when Chappie brings up humanity's, you know, big flaw. He brings it up a couple of times. I like that aspect. I like the aspects that they were going, that they were exploring. They didn't do a good job. It was almost kind of like, you're, you're like, yeah, we're going to have a big blockbuster, but we're going to cheat people out and just take a big fat on their chest. I, I wanted more, especially when you got Hugh Jackman in it. I mean, he's the Wolverine. Come on. If you're curious about Chappie, because let's, I'm going to be honest with you. Sometimes I had a hard time knowing if it was an actual robotic Android kind of control thing, or if it was a person in a suit with like parts of robotic and they fill in with CG. It was flawless. Absolutely perfect. I like that. It was so hard to tell real, fake, real. That was cool. If you're interested in that aspect of it, I would say go see it. Just remember, there's gonna be some bull moments and some plot holes in there that are kinda like don't quite make sense or it's just too easily convenient. But if you can get past all that, you might actually like the movie. I'm gonna give it a five out of 10. And the reason it only gets the five is because I enjoyed what action I got and the special effects. Those were outstanding. All right, let's talk about Chappie. Thoughts, opinions, feelings. How'd you feel about this? I have very strong opinions about this movie. It's eating a hole through me. The best way I can describe this movie, it has a genius and concept. They were exploring aspects of the concept of AI and consciousness that have not been done in a movie. I've never seen them done in a movie before. By making Chappie, as you see in the trailer, start as a child, you see the growth of a consciousness and the concept behind that. And that is an amazing journey. The CG they did and the graphical effects, just the way he moves and the way he acts was just Spot on. I've never seen anything recreated that well. When you see it the first time, when you see him animated for the first time, you're just like, that's got to be a person in a suit. Is that CG or it, uh, robotic? We don't it's know. It's got to be a person <laughs> in a suit. There's, there's, it's got to be. There's no way. It looks so amazing the way they did the subtle movements. The parts of the movie that ruin the movie get brought into the movie, and they start to overtake the movie. Certain actors in the movie, um, Ninja and Yolandi, no problem with them being in the movie. They're, <laughs> they're banned from South Africa. The whole thing is based around their world. So if you need gangsters in South Africa, they are gangsters in South Africa. So they look the part, they talk the part, they have the accent. The problem was, for some reason, they didn't know they were acting. They're wearing the shirts of their band the entire movie. The Thank entire you. soundtrack is their band. I don't know how many scenes they have a picture of themselves on their shirt. I was impressed that they allowed him to keep his tattoos in film since they are rather vulgar. So he had his actual full tattoos, his sleeves were there and everything. I just don't understand the concept of it. Their intrusiveness into this movie ruins the movie. It breaks immersion over and over again. You're all, wait, is that a picture of him as Jesus on his shirt? Oh, it says the name of his band on the back. Why are their characters their actual names? 
These are characters. These aren't the actual people. Hugh Jackman. I don't know what they were thinking with Hugh Jackman. He was horrible in this movie. He's the, obviously the villain. He's presented that way in the trailer. Not only does he not really have a lot of camera time, he's not really on screen very often. But when he is on screen, it, he's a bit player. They literally could have been anybody in that part. It didn't showcase what he can do because you've seen him in so many other things. Him being overshadowed like that, it feels fake. His character had no depth. Everything else in the movie, aside from D'Antwood, have tons of depth. The Chappie character, the creator character, all of those characters have a lot of depth and a lot of philosophical concept to them. Watching a bad movie is a bad experience, but watching a bad movie that could have been a great movie with minor changes that this director probably knew they were wrong. I mean, the dude made District 9. There's no way he didn't realize these were stupid decisions. <laughs> There's no way. That movie was amazing, and this has a lot of that same feel to it. When you watch the movie and when you see the movie, you'll understand what I mean. It was too much, too in your face, I don't even mind them having their own style in the movie because they have a very unique style outside the movie and inside the movie. Pink shoulder pads and skater gear and painted guns and stuff like that, but they go way too far with it. Just way too far. It ruins this movie. Absolutely ruins this movie. Uh, honestly, this movie, I, I like the idea of the robot. I like the idea of what they were going with it and everything. I just couldn't get past the fact of the, the actors trying to be so gangster. It was driving me nuts. I can't stand that, oh yeah, all this stuff. It was YOLO! Just, yeah, and this, all this sniffing <laughs> stuff. It was driving me nuts. It was getting to the point where I'm sitting there kind of looking around going, why am I watching this? How much longer do we and, got? You know, then the parts, there are several parts in it where I was interested because of the robot aspect. And I'm a, I'm a big tech guy, and I love like robots and you know any aspect of that that could come true one day. And that's why I was kind of interested in this movie. At the same time, I didn't like the idea of what I was seeing. And this movie basically did what it did. I liked the robot aspect. I liked watching it. I liked that they went a little bit more beyond than I thought they were going to go with it just by watching the trailers with the robot. But I just couldn't get past the fact of the, I guess, the actors. I mean, I couldn't get past the how, what was going on with them and the, the way they act and everything about it. I know that's what they're trying to represent is what they are, I guess, or not what they are, but what they are in this movie. I just couldn't do it. It was, it was driving me nuts. Do you think Terminator can beat Chappie? Uh, yeah, probably. <laughs> I'll be back. This movie has so much potential and it got lost in all the gangster crap. <laughs> it could have been PG-13. Yeah, they would have. I, I just thought, I thought this was a PG-13 movie where teenagers could see it, maybe even kids with parents You're really bummed out it. about that. Not bummed out, just surprised that this could have been aimed for a wider audience. It has robots in it, for crying out loud. Now, I know there are a lot of movies with robots that are already, like Terminator, duh. But this is a robot that is born, learns as a child, grows up. That sounds like something kids would want to see. But unfortunately, this is an adult-oriented film, and it had such a good concept and an idea that pitched out. But the way it was, the overall deliverance of it just kind of fell short. It got lost in something. The CGI was flawless. Nothing wrong there. The dialogue wasn't terribly well written. It was just the way it was executed. Out of, you know, out of ten, I'm going to give this a, probably a five and a half. So that's my score for Jackie. I'm going to give it a four. I, in all honesty, because, like I said, I liked the robot aspect. But would I want to see this again and have to go through that part of the movie? No, I couldn't. So I'm going to give this a low score because it just, I didn't enjoy it like I wanted to. I give it a five. And here's the problem with giving it a five in my mind. It could have been so much more. And it, it could have been so much more. Normally you say bad script, bad pacing, bad this, bad that. It had all of that. It was simply, the movie was taken over by the people that shouldn't have been in control. It, it could have been a 10. The thought process and the concepts in it are so solid. And the way that their point is presented at its core is amazing. Could you stand here firmly and proudly and say if you're interested in seeing the chappy robot, like that aspect, go see it, or would you say just pass? Um, you know what? I would say see it. Just know going in to ignore those characters. Know and know your concept of what Hugh Jackman's character stands for. Know in your in your mind what those the gangster characters, the the Antwerp characters or T Antwerp, whatever they're called, stand for. Know what they're supposed to be, ignore the rest of it. Take their concepts in the story, and then the good parts of the story, put them together, and you'll really, really enjoy the philosophical ride they take you, take you on. You will really care about what's happening. But the second that they get into your mind and you start rolling your eyes, because you will, you won't care anymore. They make you not care. What is your favorite robot? From any movie, anything sentient, robot, what is it down there? And as always, we're letting you know before you go, at Brendan Peters. I just, some stuff I just make up. 
And if I hear it, it is a subconscious thing because I fall asleep That's watching Netflix. Subconscious. Yeah, subconscious. I disassociate myself. Of being afraid. And so, so I don't get scared in these movies, and I have no empathy for when the characters die and get squashed by big things. You try and be cool? That only took you about 42 seconds. Not even fast. That's what she said. I ah! I am cocky. Try to be more humble like. Oh, you. you. I'm all or nothing. Okay. Bring it on. The sequel. Bring it on, snap and head shake. If it makes money, it will. That wasn't it. even snap and head shake, that was swing Snap and head. swing the fat body around, come was, see this. I don't even know what that was. Right here in his mind, he's thinking, milkshake. Fatty made the buddy. Chuck Norris. I won that turkey.